Thank you, Brother Carl, for the greeting to all you, brethren and sisters from the Lord. It's, uh, I just sometimes feel a little reluctant to get up when I'm listening to such wonderful testimonies and so forth as I've been doing this morning. And then a uh, fellow citizen in the suffering and persecution as our Baptist brother and sister has gone through being formerly a, a Baptist myself, a missionary Baptist, and knowing what it means when your people, I had the same thing, my own people turned me out and they thought they'd send me away because I'd gone crazy. And uh, I found out, and I've usually said in a little kind of a roundabout way, if I'm crazy, just let me alone because I'm happier this way than I was with my right yeah. mind. <laughs> let me so that's uh, kind of a little philosophy that I hold my own, and and I certainly have been enjoying this this time of being this away in the little Church of Christ, brother here, as we usually refer to it, our Camelite. And I remember they were certainly hard hitters against the me- meetings when we first started. But you know, we had one named Paul, and I was the same way. He become one of us, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think what usually they look for is the life you live. You know, it's better to live me a sermon than preach me one any time. Amen. Amen. Some time ago, a great minister, fine, full gospel man, of all of you know him, I suppose, is Reverend Booth Cliburn. Preaches the gospel in seven different languages. He's just smart. And uh, he's a mental giant. And uh, we were going along together one time, and he and Brother Moore and I, and we were discussing something, and I had the opposite side to him, and he looked around at me and said, you just don't know your Bible. <laughs> you know how Brother Booth can say it? Yeah, yeah. I said, that's true, Brother Booth, but I know the author real well. Yeah, so. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, uh I want to, you know, not to know his word is life, but to know him is life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Whether I know his word, if I just know him. And that certainly is the truth. Yeah. I was this morning shaking hands with this fine fellowship here of ministers. and Sitting down here, there's this, I don't mean to make anybody conspicuous, but this colored man come in, brother, sat down there. I said to my secretary here, there's a real Christian. You remind me so much of Elder Smith. He used to be a Church of God in Christ, I believe. I used to preach so much for them down there. And now I can just see him yet. He looks something like the brother here, only he had a kind of a gray mustache. I'd come in the back door, and i never forget the expression. The old man used to say, Look up, and all the saints would be singing, you know. And there's a little girl who used to sit on the corner. My favorite song was Lift Him Up. They'd all clap their hands, Pentecostal fashion, you know, Lift Him Up. They love me, and I love them. And when we walk in, he used to throw that his head like this on the desk and just watch him, you know. He say, Come in, Elder, rest your hat. <laughs> rest your hat. <laughs> Brother, here. And I learned then that. One of my favorite gospel singers is his wife. And uh, I've done all the hinting I could to get her to sing, and then she has not to be called on, and I know what that means. But I'm going to personally invite her, if she can, come over and sing. Well, aren't you the sister that sang that ship ahoy one morning at the Christian businessman yes, down? Yes. I hope my wife gets up this week, and I want her to hear you because I brag so much, and if you miss that on the tape, <laughs> We're going to settle it. <laughs> I love that good singing. And I used to tell the people I I never could sing. Oh, my. I was a million miles from that. But I said, if you ever get over in heaven and live in your big palace, you know, up there, I said, way down to bottom of the hill back in the woods back there is a little cabin sits there. That'll be mine. And one of these mornings when you walk out on the porch and hear somebody stand up there singing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. <laughs> say to rest like me. You say, Praise God, old Brother Branham finally made it. <laughs> be me over there trying to sing. <laughs> to my Christian brethren, and to, uh, I believe one brother introduced him to us this morning as a Buddha uh, minister over here. Greetings to you, my 
precious friend. And I have had much dealings, not too much, but with the Buddha uh, people, and especially in Canada amongst the Chinese people, and found them very loving and sweet. I remember a little Buddha man from the Buddha temple came in to the Winnipeg meeting, and he was blind. He was very small, sweet little people, and they certainly believed that God was the healer and while praying for him, and he is repeating over how he loved God and all at once his eyes come open. Uh, in the, and it was such a, a wonderful thing. So we, uh, we appreciate uh, every man and every person. Now, uh, I haven't had this opportunity before in Chicago to try to uh, uh, speak, which I would not try to bring any certain message because of ministers, you are so much more able than I to bring a message. But, and after all, you are not uh, here to hear a message, but I thought that it might be a most glorious time that I could meet the ministers of Chicago, uh, this district in here, and get more acquainted with them and we be more acquainted with each other. And um, I certainly thank the Lord for this opportunity because I have come into this city many times here under one church sponsorship and under the Christian businessman sponsorship, therefore with not an opportunity to express myself to the Association of Brothers. And... Uh, and then I thought, and there's so much that always follows a ministry like this, of ins and outs and ups and downs, so sometimes it's easy for someone to draw a wrong impression. And I want to take this next few minutes to try to explain and, and make it clear to my brethren, as clear as I know how to make it. And uh, I'm insufficient and incapable of making a... A uh, talk that would perhaps seem sensible to men who are educated. I uh, do not have an education, and I like that. But I was love the Lord, and the Lord gave me uh, perhaps another way to win souls by a divine gift that it uh, might fill up the gap of what my parents was unable to give me an education from a home of a poor family and ten children and a sick father, and I did not get the chance to get an education. So then, but at birth, uh, there was something happened, that an experience with God to my mother and father, and you've read my story, and by that, I tried to put in my part with you, brethren, to draw sinners to Christ. And now... Um, I, I'm not superstitious, but uh, always before opening the word, I like to speak to the author a little bit. And could we just bow our heads again for a moment? Our precious Father, Thou art our God, and we are approaching Thee in behalf of the gospel. I'm here before Your children, Your pastors, and brethren of like precious faith, how it thrills my heart to hear these men who have been misunderstood and sent into institutions for the kingdom of God's sake. See how you're calling your children in the last days. And we truly believe, Father, that we are living at the end of the race. As a prophet said, it shall be light in the evening time. And believing today that we are the couriers of this great gospel light, that by your grace you have permitted us to pack to the ends of the earth where this revival has gone. And I pray, Father, that from my heart that thou will let me express to my brethren this morning the motive and objective of my life to you that they might understand. Granted that we might have perfect love and fellowship and cooperation 
and all the working of the gospel. For we asked it in Jesus' name, who prayed that we might be one as he and his Father was one. Leaving this, that this will all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one for the other. Amen. 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 Now, just, and I hope and trust that I do not bore uh, you brethren and sisters upon this, but I think I'd like to make myself clear so that you won't have to hear what someone else has said. And I have explained many times in other ministerial meetings, but this is my first time to the Chicago group. And I'd like to make myself real well known at, uh, of what I am trying to do. In the uh, uh, blessed old gospel here, the 26th chapter of uh, the book of Acts, we read, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. This is, of course, Paul speaking, which we all as ministers like to refer back to him because he, we in one accord believe that he was the apostle to the Gentile uh, church that God called him to be a, a witness to the Gentiles. And his ministry had been called into question. And usually his, anything that's unusual springs up, it is called into question. It's, and I think it's no more than right. It should be called into question. And I think that pastors sometimes are suspicious of, of uh, things that they hear. And uh, I think they have a right to be. Because if I understand the translation of the word pastor, it means a shepherd. And therefore, he's a, a, a feeder or a herder of a group of men and women of which the Holy Spirit has made him uh, the overseer of. And he has a right to know what kind of uh, food his sheep is getting and where it's coming from. I think he has a right to that. And... If a pastor, or sometimes people would seem to be just a little bit uh, suspicious, that doesn't, uh, never, uh, should not bother anyone. It should only bring a respect to a man's heart for a man of that, that standing uh, that would uh, question it. And uh, after all, if you're not sure that you're lined up right, how can you ever walk by faith? If you put up on your mind, now this seems to be psychology, which it probably is, and it is, but it's all right. But you just really from your heart would think you'd never raise the table. You probably wouldn't, see. You've got, it's just that simple. You've got to believe. You've got to have faith. You've got to have confidence. And how can you have confidence in anything that you, that you don't even know where you're going? How could I travel down a road that I've never been before with a breakneck speed and all around curves not knowing what the next curve holds? You've got to see where you're going or you don't know how to walk. And that's the way everyone should be. And then when you can, you see it, it's revealed to you and you know where you're going and nothing's going to stop you. And that's, I think, Paul, what he was trying to get to Agrippa here. That he, the, he told them that once I was one of you, and I suppose maybe if, if this Baptist brother and uh, could go to the Baptist church this morning, he and his wife, that would perhaps be their testimony. I, I was once one of you. Or the Church of Christ or the, the, the uh, Camelite brother here would go to, uh, to his people. I believe it's called a better name, uh, Disciples of Christ, they call it. But it is really for the Alexander Camel doctrine. And then the Church of Christ pulled out of you on kind of music. <laughs> That's right. And if he could go back to them, he'd say, I was once the of you. And Paul goes back here to King Agrippa and Festus and said, I was once the of you. I was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. He come up under Gamaliel the Great teacher and he knowed all their rules and regulations and just what they believed and what they did not believe and said, even I persecuted the church of God unto death. See, he said, the very thing that I'm in question about, I was a persecutor of. And 
I've always thought that the death of Stephen's must have got on to Paul. Because uh, when he's seen that glorious look on Stephen's face, Hallelujah. when he looked up and the clods have beaten him to death, and he said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Amen. And you know, you can kill a messenger, but you can never kill his message. Yes, it's right. right. <laughs> and the message, though Stephen's was gone, on to stand with Jesus. Yet his message lingered on oh, because Christ. Paul kept... Uh, talking about it and what he's least of them and wasn't worthy to be called one because he had a witness and and give uh, his consent to rid this godly person and therefore paul like all men before man should do paul takes his his experience back from the beginning to what he was and then places it and bases it upon the Scripture to show that what he was doing was scriptural. Though it was contrary to their belief, yet he was showing them that it was the Scripture. Therefore, I think that uh, we anything, as I've often said, brethren, you who've been in the meetings, that if I'm ever found uh, speaking things that's not scriptural, then I think it's true that, or any other brother, we ought to come to one another and say, uh, that's not found in the Bible. You see, if it's in the Bible, you might have a different interpretation, but it's, uh, if it's in the Scripture, all right. Now, Paul was given his interpretation of what the prophets said and what Moses said was coming to pass, and he met Jesus on the road in a vision. And this Jesus called out to him, which it should not have been a hard thing for those Jews, as he said, most noble Festus and, and so forth, that it, it would be a strange thing to you that God would raise the dead. See? Because if you know what God was back there by the, the Scriptures, surely you would know that he's able to raise the dead. And... Um, then he said, it gave him the experience of on his road to Damascus of what happened. That to let them know that this Jesus, that uh, they were uh, uh, t causing so much commotion about him preaching it, was the very God that they had served all the time. Because he was in the wilderness with them who led them, being that light, the uh, fire, pillow of fire that led them, and he appeared to Paul in the same thing, uh, the light again, that blinded him, and he asked, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, that you persecute, and it's hard for to kick against the pricks. And he was uh, uh, trying to explain to them what it was. And, um, and he was trying to teach them that what that he was presenting to the people that was that Jesus Christ was the Messiah and that he had died and God had raised him up and that was according to the scriptures and that he uh, now had ascended on high to God the Father and that, that he was a witness of his resurrection and that these miracles and signs and wonders which were strange before the people were not nothing new to a real scriptural believer because... The Bible had spoke of it. Look at uh, back in the prophets, how that it prophesied what at the coming of the Messiah and what he would do. The lame would leap like a heart in Isaiah 35 and different scriptures that he could have referred to. We don't have it written here, but perhaps going back and referring it in his short speech before the kings because they probably wouldn't be as patient with him as you are with me. <laughs> so, And uh, then he... Uh, he was explaining it and trying to tell them that the very God that they served, and then again he said, in the way that is called heresy, that's crazy, see, the way that's called heresy, that's the way that I worship the God that you worship, Amen. see, in the way that's called heresy. I'm sure that today, if we stood with the former churches that we belong to, such as Presbyterian, Catholic, Baptist, and different ones, we could say the same testimony yeah. to those people who say that they won't like put the brother in a psychopathic ward or something like that in the way that's called heresy. Amen. That's the way I worship the God of our fathers. Hallelujah. 
And what a grand testimony that was before Agrippa until even in the midst of his talk, Agrippa cried out and said, uh, Paul, Saul, thou almost persuadeth me to be a Christian. See, how he brought the Scriptures so clear, yet was contrary to his own synagogue, but the Scriptures are so perfectly clear to he said, Thou almost persuadeth me to be like you are. Yeah. Paul said, I wished you were. Amen. Altogether, only I wouldn't want you to be in these chains that I'm in, you see. But to be a believer like he was, in other words, if I, I wish to God that you seen the revelation like, like I see it, in other words, I, I wish you could do that. I just wish that you would. When Festus, I believe, had told him that he had studied too much, he was off at his head. But he let him know that he, that he wasn't, that he, he knew where he was at. And I would say this this morning, brethren, I altogether wish that I might, implying not the life of Paul, but just in order to give a little basic talk, because there's many more here that perhaps will speak this morning, but I wanted this opportunity to say this. Now, I wish that every uh, different church, as I heard you go down, Bethel Temple, Independent, Assemblies of God, and different ones, I wish that all together you could see what I see. Amen. You could, I wish you could see the vision that I see. Then you'd have a clear understanding that of the ministry. When I left the Baptist church to come over into Pentecost, and uh, uh, Dr. Roy Davis, who had ordained me into the Missionary Baptist Church, told me that I had a nightmare when the vision of the Lord came and, and spoke to me and and you know what healing was then? It was at the low ebb. And, and I know nothing about Pentecostal. I heard there's a bunch of holy rollers that laid on the floor and slobbered like mad dogs. And they had to fan them and get them back to life and all like that. That's all I know about uh, the Pentecostal people. He said, who do you think will hear you? I said, if God is sending me there somewhere and somebody he's sending me to. Amen. That's right. right. See, because I said, Dr. Davis... I said, he was just as real. I stood and looked at him. I said, they told me at those visions, I am a great believer, brethren, that uh, gifts and callings are without repentance. Yes. Amen. I, I believe that. You're born. You cannot be something that you are not. Amen. And whenever you try to make yourself something that you're not, you're just playing the part of a hypocrite. Amen. And God, let me die before being a hypocrite. See, Amen. let me be just what I am. And then make it plain and clear. And, and then let, let me be that way. And then everybody knows. And you know just exactly. And so now, as you know, I did not get very much of a schooling, as I said. So in, my, uh, in theology, I am the poorest there is. <laughs> and I guess you know that, see. And as a preacher, I could hardly even call myself one because of not getting schooling and knowing words and so forth. But what little I have to, is my knowledge or knowing by His grace, the Lord Jesus, I try to share that with all my brothers everywhere, yeah. to share this. And, but when I left the Baptist church, which was the only church I ever uh, come in or was ordained in, and I was ordained in 1933 in the Missionary Baptist Church, Jeffersonville, Indiana. It's a, uh, it's a member of the Southern Baptist uh, Convention. Then we, uh, in this time, uh, I, when I pulled away and just uh, now the Baptist Church is a sovereign church. We we all know that that it's a uh, it's a uh, you can preach about anything you want to if your congregation will stand for it. Uh, they just. Uh, uh, you want to preach whatever you wish, and I like that, see, because I believe it's apostolic, because uh, the head, the highest order in the church is the shepherd. We realize that, the pastor. And, uh, and if, the, uh, uh, if some bishop or somebody else is going to knock the revelation out of the pastor, then how is the God going to ever work in his church? You, see, you just can't get it. So, and... Uh, I have, uh, when I come out of there, I met up with the first group, which is the healing of little Betty Darty at uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and it was a Pentecostal, a uh, united or uh, Pentecostal Jesus name church. And uh, this pastor belonged to, and his little girl was healed. Frankly, I thought that's what made him Pentecostal, was because that they called themselves Jesus only. 
And uh, I thought that's what made them Pentecostal. It was because that was what they call themselves, and that was the difference. So, uh, well, then from there I went to an, a fine man, had a great meeting in St. Louis, which the picture appears in there. We had the Keele Auditorium, and the first night or two, there's 14,000 packed it out, and we couldn't even had put police around the doors to keep them away. And then from there on down to Richard T. Reed, uh, the Blessed Old Bible Hour Tabernacle at Jonesboro, which was also of the same organization. And from that to uh, Dr. G.H. Brown, same organization at 505 Victor Street and uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And from there to the West Coast. And then when I gets to the West Coast, I hit the fire. Then I found out that there was as many divisions amongst the Pentecostal people in their organizations as we Baptists have. <laughs> See, they were, they were so many different. There was had they had different. There was assemblies of God and the Church of God and the uh, something else and the something else and the something else and the and the difference. And they had separated themselves and had drawn little boundary lines. And all the other brethren begin to come to me and tell me. Why, you're Jesus only with this group over here. I said, no, I don't, I don't call myself that. See? He said, why, well, you're associating with them. I said, well, that uh, don't make me that. See? And I said, I, 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 I just, uh, they were brothers. And he said, why, well, they're a bunch of, why, well, they don't have nothing but a bunch of buzzard roosters and things around like that. Where I said, now, I beg your pardon. I meet real godly man there. And they are a man of God. And I said, I, I certainly resent calling them evil because they're not. Well, then I tried to hold it off just as long as I could without expressing either way. Well, I began to study what their ideas was and what their separations was and what made them separated. And I found that two of the great groups, one of them was called Jesus Only, and the other was called Assemblies of God. And they were called out or separated on the account of the issue of water baptism, one using Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the other using Jesus' name. Well, I looked, and on both sides there were great men, servants of God. And I thought, oh, God, if I could see all them emerge into, just go ahead and have, but do, uh, do, do not just draw their lines and say we won't fellowship one with another. But I found out in this, the evil spirit had got among them. And it caused hatred and malice over issues that had come among them. I thought, that's just exactly as good as the devil wants. Amen. That's just Amen. what he wants. As long as your guns are trained on one another, he doesn't have to fight a lick. And, I, and so then finally it come to a showdown. And that showdown was at Seattle, Washington, about 1946. And one morning I was brought to the hotel lobby, something like this, with a, a breakfast of some ministers. And I had to talk to two main men, and one of them was Dr. Ness. I suppose you assemblies of God, brethren, remember him is the Northwestern Territory, a great man, smart scholar. And um, he represented the assemblies of God. And then Dr. Sism of the United Pentecostal Church, I guess you United Pentecostal brother, remember him. He is also of uh, the Northwestern um, Territories up there, that he was uh, over them in the districts up there. Well, these two men met, and I was to be brought before them because the, the edges was getting sharp, and it was cutting at me from every way. And I thought, well, what must I do? What can I do? Now, well, they said, well, you must take sides with one or the other. If you're going to go with the Jesus name, you have to be Jesus name. And if you go with the assemblies of God, you have to leave away from Jesus' name and be assemblies of God, or so forth. It come to a place where I had to make a showing of some sort. I prayed much that morning before going down. I said, God, help me, because there's two great men, there's thousands of servants, and you have sent me out here with a ministry, and they're both your servants, and should I throw what little influence I have to one organization when it's fighting the other one? See? Uh, I, I just can't feel right in doing that. I do not think that it would be the will of Christ for me to do it. 
And I said, God, help me and give me something to do or give me something to say. And then I had no one. I just had to stand there, just the Lord Jesus and I that morning. Well, the great debate come up. What are you going to do? What, uh, what, what decision are you going to make? I said, my decision has already been made. That my decision is to stand between both of you and join neither organization and say with arms around both of you, we are brethren. Amen. Amen. We are brethren. Amen. And I said, I have tried to read all the books that I could, how this come up, what was called this new issue on how they separated themselves and how that this one began this way and that way. And I said, in arguments between you, I said, that's the same thing that broke up the Pentecostal move on the day after Pentecost. They began to argue among one another. And I said, the thing <coughs> separates again. I said, is there a possibility that there could be a medium between you, you brethren? Is there anything that it could stand? Well, they wouldn't open their mouth on that because it was very sharp. You know about uh, 15, 20 years ago how it was because the one group would just pull from the other and there was contention very much. So I said, well, brethren, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... St- God never sent me to baptize anyhow. <laughs> he sent me to pray for his sick children. <laughs> I said, so I am going to... Uh, to pray for the sick children, and you ministers do your own baptizing. I said, I said, uh, now I want to ask you something, just so that you will understand. I said, Brother Nest, uh, these Jesus named people, do you believe that they have received the Holy Ghost when they speak in tongues and do the same thing that you in the assemblies of God does? I said, certainly. I said, Brother Sisson. Do you believe that the assemblies of God have the Holy Ghost when they speak in tongues and do the same thing you did upon the baptism? He said, sure I do. I said, now, the Bible said God gives those the Holy Ghost who obeys him. Now, who obeyed him? <laughs> who obeyed him? Which one of you obeyed him and God gave you both the Holy Ghost? See? I said, would you say, Brother Sism, that Brother Nest hasn't got the Holy Ghost? I said, no. I said, would you say that Brother Sism hasn't got the Holy Ghost? No. See? That they both believed each other had the Holy Ghost. But you see, it just doesn't make sense, brethren. It doesn't make sense. And I heard a little later from that, I'll come back to my point in a minute. The Finnish brethren over here, after I had left Finland, where God gave us what I thought one of our greatest meetings, therefore the little dead boy was raised in many things. I met in Stockholm, Sweden with uh, uh, Louis Petrus of the Philadelphia Church there, which is a great man of God. And the Philadelphia Church, uh, Brother Gordon Lindsay, which was now, I think, I don't think he belongs to it now, but he was, uh, uh, belonged to the Assemblies of God. And the Assemblies of God is one of my great sponsors internationally. And the Four Square, which was a pull away from the Assemblies of God, is one of my great sponsors. The one that is internationally is one of my great sponsors. See? And I just took that stand, only leaving sharp edges, and then took a stand that I will not take stands on either side of that fussing until we can see we are brothers and come together and then we'll, we'll all see that same direct point there that we're coming to, the motive and objective of doing so. And you, you must test your motive and objective. First. first, find the will of God and then find your objective and then test your motive and see if your motive is right. Then, as Jesus said in Mark 11, uh, 24, if you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt in your heart. But as long as you got doubt in the heart, whether it's the will of God or your motive or objective is wrong, how is it going to move? But when you know that your motive is right and it's the will of God and your objective is right, it's got to move. That's all. Or God told something wrong. That's the very reason when I go to the platform in churches, no one has never heard me mention those things on platform, those issues. I just let them alone. See, that's up to the you man. See, I'm here to help you win souls to Christ by a divine yeah, gift. Yeah, you see, yeah. see it don't make any difference. You do your baptizing. But uh, then when it comes, of course, I've been called everything. I've been called, uh, uh, I don't know how many, anywhere from an a incarnate son of God down to a, a devil. <laughs> That's right, everything. But... At the back of it all, I'm your brother, fellow citizen of the kingdom of God, working with you all for the kingdom. And that is true. Now, 
Uh, if it's all right and you think we have enough time, I'd like to tell you how we discuss that. Would it be all right, brother? Just for a minute, brother, uh, brother Nest and them. All right. And it might be a little bit that would help you. It help you to understand. Kind of, I wrote down uh, here some of the things that I remembered. It took off there, and um, so uh, they uh, asked me what did I believe about the Trinity. Did I believe that there was a trinity of God? Now, brethren, when we approach this, I hope that when this is over, that we'll be the same brothers that we've been all along. See, But I feel that I owe it to you because your people comes to my meetings, and I certainly wouldn't want to send one of them away deceived. And I have always told the people who write me questions outside of what I preach on the platform, and here's my secretary and so forth, if they ask me a question, what about this or what about that, I said, ask your pastor. See, Because if he's led you this far to you've received the Holy Ghost, he'll take you on. You see. You, uh, see, you ask your pastor because little things like that causes confusion, and therefore I leave away from it, you see. Now... And I've been said that I was a, a fighter of organizations. Now, I am not. I think that organizations is wonderful. But when your system of your organization gets corrupt, that's what I'm against. See, and No matter whether it's oneness or, or it's a trinity or whatever it is, the system that when you get to a spot, you now I say, we are the assemblies of God. Well, who's that across the street? Oh, that's our brethren. They are, they are called the United Pentecostal. Well, who's that over there? Oh, that's the Four Square Brethren. Oh, we are wonderful brethren. We have a great fellowship one with another. Oh, do you all believe the same thing? Oh, yes, we believe. Now, well, what makes you this way? Well, these brethren baptize this way, and these baptize this way, face fomus, and these baptize, like in South Africa there, brother, we run up on that. They ask me, one group baptizes three times face forward, and the other baptizes three times face backward. And they said, I said, where do you get that one? said, when he died, the Bible said he pitched forward. And said, therefore, we should pitch him forward. And I said, well, to the other group, what, did, what about you? said, did you ever bury a man with his face down? <laughs> well, and you know what? They separated themselves and made two groups, two organizations. Oh, mercy, brethren. That's just what the devil wants. That's just what he wants. But, uh, get yourself. Now, see, it's not... The Apostolic Faith Mission, or, or is it, either it is the uh, Pentecostal Assemblies on the other side. It isn't that there are fine men in both groups like there is here. But you see, it's the system of the thing. It's uh, just like the Catholic, as I've often said. If he's a Catholic and depending on Christ for salvation, he's saved. Yeah. Certainly, that's right. If he's depending on the church, he's lost. And any of you Pentecostal brother know, if we're looking to the Pentecostal church to save us, we're among man most miserable. <laughs> That's right, because we're lost. That's right. But if we're looking to Jesus Christ, Amen. then we're saved by our faith of our finished work. And these little working things and brands, it doesn't make much difference. Now, I said to Brother Sism to, and Brother Ness to answer your question, I said, now, I do not take either sides with you, brethren, and I know as long as you fuss, you're both wrong, see, because I would rather be wrong in my doctrine and right in my heart than to be right in my doctrine and wrong in my heart. See? I said, after all, it's your heart's condition. And I've made that a practice to know this, that if a man, no matter what he does and how much he differs, and what he says about me, if in my heart, not for Mr. Duty, but from my heart, I can't love that man as well as I love anyone else. Then I know there's something wrong in here. Amen. See, that's right. Because it's it, no matter if he, uh, a little brother come not long ago, a little Church of Christ brother. And, oh, he stood up there and he said, this guy is the devil. See, he said, he says of the Holy Ghost. He said, there is no such a thing. They, well, uh, only the 12 apostles received the Holy Ghost. And, and divine healing was only given to those 12 apostles. And went on about a half hour. And I said, just a moment, brother. I think you ought to give me just a chance to defend this. See, I said, you said that you spoke where the Bible spoke. It was silent where it was silent. And uh, he said, we do. I said, now you said that just the 12 apostles received the Holy Ghost. The Bible said there was 120 in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell. That's right. Women and all. 
And would you mind to tell me, do you think Paul didn't have the Holy Ghost? And he received it a long time after that. See? Mm-hmm. And you said the gift of healing was only given to the twelve apostles, and Stephen's went out a few days later, and he wasn't one of the twelve. He's not even a preacher. He is a deacon. And went out to Samaria and cast out devils. And I thought, oh, brother, uh, it's very silent right here where you have to keep it. And after it was over, I said, I forgive you for calling me a devil. Of course, I know you didn't mean that. And then when he got finished, he come up. He said, there's one thing I can say. You have the Spirit of Christ. I said, now, brother, which am I, a devil or of Christ? See, see? But I tell you, see, because if a man, he could tell that I loved him. No matter he was disagreeing and horribly disagreeing and lambasting, I'm a hunter and uh, with wild beasts all my life. And people said, how that time when I had to kill that bear with a knife? See, said, wasn't you afraid of him? I said, no. If I'd been afraid of him, he'd kill me. See, but see, you can't you can't bluff them. They know whether you're afraid of them or not. Right. You'd be afraid of a horse and watch what a horse will do. He'll stomp you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you're afraid, you can't bluff it. You've really got to have it. Amen. That's the way it is with Satan. Amen. That's the way it is among man. Amen. You've got to love man. You can't just bluff it. You've got to have it or your colors will show somewhere. See, Amen. That's right. You've really got to love people and they know you love them. See, there's something about it. And the man now called my wife a few days ago and says, Is Brother Brandon there? Said, No. Said, Well, one thing I have to say, I disagree with him in theology, but I say he's a servant of Christ. Well, then, um, and then before I left, he sent a letter to me and he said, I'm coming up as soon as you get back. I want that baptism of the Holy Ghost that you're talking about. So, you see, just where if, you'd have, if I'd have had that feeling of saying, well, there's nothing to you. Your old denomination is no good. And, and uh, all you uh, Church of Christ people is no good. You're no good. You're, you're devils. I'd have never won that man. Amen. And if I would have told him that I loved him and didn't mean it in my heart, he'd have known better. <laughs> now, that's, that's all there is to it. You've got to mean it in your heart. Amen. And that's on the nights when I walk out on that platform under that discernment. See, I don't think about it. I just don't eat too from dinner time and fast and pray and stay in the room because he promised me he would do it. Amen. And therefore, I go without one shadow of doubt because he promised he would do it. Amen. Therefore, see, I know my motive is what? My objective is what? For the furtherment of the kingdom of God. If a man goes this way, that way, whatever church he goes, as long as he comes to Christ, it doesn't Amen. matter to me. And that's in my heart, see? And no matter if we go over and join the church of Christ, that's just all right. That's fine. If he, what church he joins, it doesn't matter to me. But as long as I want his soul with Christ is the main thing. So I said, Brother Ness, not to be different. Now, I'm going to... Sh- it's all right to use this, brother. I said, I want to say and explain, and in this I might say to you, brother, in here, now, don't mention this amongst your congregations. If you will, and do me a favor, just just, just let me just be your brother, you see. And, I, and if, uh, if I'm wrong, then you forgive me. But I want to explain to you, being that there's both groups sitting here this morning, uh, both the oneness and the the assemblies also in the Trinitarian belief. Now, I want to make this statement. I want to say that I believe that both sides are wrong as long as they argue one with another because their motives is wrong. As long as your motives is wrong, no matter what your objective is, but your motives to that objective is wrong, then it'll never work. That's right. Now, some people have said, Brother Branham, you are a Jesus only. I want to say that that is an error. I am not a Jesus only. Somebody says, Brother Branham, are you a Trinitarian? No, sir. I am not a Trinitarian. I'm a Christian. See? I, I, I don't... The word Trinitarian don't even uh, mention in the Bible the word Trinity. And I do not believe that there is three individual gods. I believe there is one God in three offices. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's exactly why we were commissioned to baptize in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I believe that it's God condensing, coming down. 
Now, God, when he first appeared to man, he was in a form of a pillar of fire. You believe that, don't you? The, any Bible reader that knows that the pillar of fire that was in the wilderness was the Logos. That, uh, that was the angel of the covenant, which was Christ, because he said, he was, it wasn't, I believe it's St. John 6 there, he said, before Abraham was of the I Am. He was the I Am. So that was God holy. Even if a man touched the mountain, he must be killed. See? All right. Now, that same God was trying to work himself back into his creature that he created. Now, he could not come near them because they were sinful. And the blood of goats and sheep never did take away sin. We know that. It just covered sin. Now, but then that same God that was the pillar of fire, he became flesh through his son and dwelt in a body called the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And Jesus said, in, well, in 1 Timothy 3.16, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And if they could call it great, well, what would we do, see? Great is the mystery of God, for God was manifested in the flesh and seen of angels and received up into glory and so forth. Now, and he said in St. John 14 to Thomas, When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And why sayest thou, show us the Father? The Bible said that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Now, God cannot be three people, three gods, neither can Jesus be his own Father in one, see? So, you see, it makes both radically wrong. Now, and now, if you'll just notice, there's no place, if we got three gods, we're heathens. Now, we know that. Like the Jew said to me uh, one time when I was talking to him, he said, which one of them is your God? Which one is your God? The Father, the Son, or the Holy Ghost? Which one's yours? I said, well, there's no three gods. He said, you can't chop, chop God in three pieces and give him to a Jew. I said, no, sir. I said, when John Ryan had been healed of blindness there at Fort Wayne, you know, and this rabbi up here at Mishawa, at um, Fort, uh, Benton Harbor, he said, uh, you can't chop God no three pieces and give him to a Jew. I said, certainly not. I don't. I said, rabbi, would it be hard for you to believe the prophets? He said, no. I said, in Isaiah 9 and 6, who is he talking about? To us a child is born, son is given, be called counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. He said, that was a messiah. I said, then, uh, Rabbi, what relation will Messiah be to God? He said, he will be God. That's what I thought. You see, that's exactly right. That's what he is. And so I said, tell me now where Jesus failed to fulfill exactly what the prophet said he would do. And he started to cry and walk around. I said, by that, John Ryan has his sight. And he said... um, Far be it from God having a son. I said, the great Jehovah overshadowed a woman, as the prophet said he would, and created a blood cell. And to that blood cell is where come forth the body of Christ. Look, in the Old Testament, Rabbi, I said, when a man went to make an offering, he took a lamb. He knew he had broke the commandments of God, so he took a lamb. He confessed his sins, and this lamb was killed. While the, his hands being on the lamb, his confession, that he knew that he should die for his sin, but the lamb was taking its place, and the blood cell was broke, and he held the little lamb by his hand until he felt his little life go out of it and stiffen out. And then the priest, of course, uh, threw the blood on the, on the fire, the brazen altar of judgment. Then I said, that man then... He went out of there knowing that the lamb had took his place, but he went out with the same desire he had when he come in. See? Because it could not take away sin. See? But in this case, the worshiper once purged has no more conscience of sin. There, there was an offering made yearly. But I said, now there is this time the worshiper once purged has no more conscience of sin. Because, look, Rabbi, in the hemoglobin, that little life that begins in the cell, which comes from the male sect, into the female, and she produces the egg. But a hen can lay an egg, but if it hasn't been with the male bird, it'll never hatch. And I said, then God, the greatest that filled all time and space, became down to one little germ to the womb of a woman. And then I said, 
when we are saved today, Jesus was neither Jew nor Gentile. Mm -hmm. Because the egg only produced the flesh. The blood had the life. So we, we are, the Bible said, we are saved by the blood of God. See, he was neither Jew nor Gentile. He was God. Therefore, when we come to the altar and put our hands by faith upon his head and feel the tearing and agony of Calvary and confess our sins, that we are wrong and he died in our place, then, you see, I said the blood of that lamb could not come back upon this, the blood that was cell was broke and the life that was let loose in breaking his blood cell of the lamb could not come back upon the worshiper because it was a animal life and it would not coincide with the human life. But this time, when that blood cell was broke, it wasn't merely a man, that was God's life was released. And when the worshiper lays his hands by faith upon the Son of God and confesses his sins, not the life of another man, but the life of God comes back into this man, which is eternal life, the word Zoe, which is translated God's own life, and he said he'd give us Zoe, eternal life, and now we are sons and daughters of God. There you are. I said, now what is it? It's God condensing. He came first, no man could touch him, because man had sinned. Then he was come down in a body in order to taste sin, to take sin. See, the only thing God could do to be just was do it that way. For instance, what if I had the Jewish diction of this audience this morning, like that God had over the human race. Now, I say, the first man looks at that post dies, and Tommy Hicks looks at it. Now, for instance, I'd say, Car Brother Carlson, you die for him. That wouldn't be just. I'd say, Leo, you're my secretary, you die for him. That wouldn't be just. Billy Paul, my son, you die for him. That isn't just. The only way I can be just is take his place myself. Amen. And that's what God did. He, God, is a spirit. And he created, he, he changed his caste. It ought to be striking to people to think of little Jehovah. He could have come a full-grown man. But he come into a manger over a manure pile. Little Jehovah crying like a baby. Little Jehovah playing like a boy. Little Jehovah carpenter like a workman. A little Jehovah in the teenage. Jehovah hanging between heavens and earth with gobs of drunken slobbers and spits of soldiers up on his face. Jehovah dying for his children. Jehovah dying to redeem not another person but God himself. See. God. That was his office. Why? He's trying to get back to the heart of man. Now, we couldn't touch him there. Here we felt him with our hands. Now, what did he do through the offering of that body? He becomes Jehovah in us. Yeah. We are parts of him. Yeah. On the day of Pentecost, the pillar of fire bursted itself up and tongues of fire set upon each one showing that God was separating himself amongst his church. And then, brother, if we can only get together and bring that together. Then we got Jehovah in the fullness when we come together. But how can we, when this is speaking in tongues, we got the baptism, this one, and then keep this liquor far over here, and this let's put it together. When God on the day of Pentecost come down and the Bible said, tongues of fire set upon each of them. And they tongues like a fire, licks. Is that pillar of fire separating itself and dividing itself amongst the people that we would be brethren. That day you'll know what I'm in the Father, Father, me, I, and me, and you, and me. And we, we're one. Yes. We are one, not divided. Now, Jehovah God up here couldn't touch the human race because of his own law of holiness. Jehovah God became sin for us and paid the price that the same Jehovah God could come and live in us. Yes. God above us, God with us, God in us. Yes. Not three gods, one God. Hallelujah. Professors go crazy trying to figure it out. It's, it's a revelation. Yes. It's got to be revealed to you. Now, now, when it comes to the baptism, now, many people, now, you've got to do that, brethren, or it's like I said to Brother Sism and to Brother Ness, that if you, oh, the, the argument came up, and, and many of you scholars here is more sufficient than I, 
But I've done a much studying upon the subject. And I've read the pre-Nicene Fathers, the Nicene Council, uh, and all the historians and so forth. That issue come up at the Nicene Council. Both sides went to seat. When the Catholic Church took the extreme Trinitarian side, and the others went to Unitarian. And both sides went out. Exactly right, because man had something to do into it. You've got to let God do it. Yes. No need of us trying to figure it out. Let's be brothers. Let's yes. just go on and let God do the thing yeah, that he's going to do. If he's infinite and knows all things and predicted the end from the beginning, how can we do anything about it? Just keep moving on. That's the way. Keep in step, as I said last night, with our great Joshua. Now, look. If there is three gods... I just want to show you how ridiculous this is. If there is three gods, then... Jesus was his own father. Uh, Jesus could not have been his own father, being one. And if there's three, he wasn't born to virgin birth. Now, how many, I'm going to say this is God the Father, and this is God the Son, and this is God the Holy Ghost. Now, to you different brethren here, you watch this just a minute, and you see what I'm trying to point at. I pray that God will let you see it. Now, look, you both believe the same thing. Amen. But the devil just got between you and broke you up about it. Yes, sir, it's exactly the same thing. I'll prove it to you. By the help of God and with God's Bible. If it ain't the Bible, then don't receive it. That's right. But now look. This is what God the Father. This is God the Son. This is God the Holy Ghost. Well now, let's stop now just a minute. Laying those three out there. God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, I, I'm not going to have time to do this. Go ahead. I, uh, Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, well, I hurry just quick as can. Forgive me, my brethren. But I, I, I've never got to talk to you, and I, I want to do this. And then look. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Now, who was the Father of Jesus Christ? God was the Father of Jesus Christ. We all believe that. Is that right? Amen. All right. Now, when we take Matthew 28, 19... When Jesus said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Ten days afterwards, Peter said, Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a straight contradiction somewhere. Now, let's don't, don't, is the, everybody's testified and things. Here it is. Here's my belief, and I'm just laying out before you, brethren. I don't say this out in the pulpits. It's up to you. But I want to show you what I see on both sides so the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. See? Now... Matthew twenty eight nineteen, and if if Matthew twenty eight nineteen contradicts Acts two thirty eight, then there's a contradiction in the Bible, and it's not worth the paper it's wrote on. Amen. Right. Yeah. Now, if you'll notice, in Matthew the sixteenth chapter, Jesus gave to Peter the revelation and gave him the keys. Now, remember the. Bible is not revealed by theology. If some man made a scheme, it's not. It's a revelation. Yeah. It was a revelation to begin with. Why did Abel offer unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain? It was revealed to him that it wasn't peaches and apples and oranges and apples. If apples <laughs> make women realize they're naked, we better pass the apples again, brother. Don't you think so? <laughs> I, I, I sound sacrilegious, but I don't mean to say that. But it wasn't apples. No, sir. Now, and if that be so, then it was revealed to Abel that he was the blood of his father. So he offered blood because it was a revelation. The whole thing's built up on that. Now look, here's an old ignorant fisherman. Not even enough education. The Bible said he was ignorant and unlearned. But he was standing there and Jesus asked the question, Who do you say I, the Son of Man, am? One said, Why, you're, you're Moses. They say, You're Moses. Who do, 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 does, uh, they say, I'm one said, well, you're Jeremiah, so the prophets, and this, that, the other. He said, that's not the question. I asked you, who do you say that I am? And Peter stayed right out and said, thou art the Son of God. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas. Now watch. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Yes. Now watch. Now the Catholic Church says that he built the church upon Peter. That's wrong. The Protestant church says he built it upon himself. But now watch and find out. See if it is. He built it upon the spiritual revelation 
of who he was. Amen. See? Amen. Because he said, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. I say thou art Simon. Upon this rock, what rock? The revelation. Amen. Yes. I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Amen. Then when Peter standing present, when Matthew 28 was quoted and turned around on and ten days later with that revelation and baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, why did he do it with the revelation of God and had the keys to the kingdom, brother? Amen. Now, I might hurt you for a minute one side of you, Amen. but stop just a minute. There is not one place in the Bible where any person was ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. There's not one place in the Scriptures, and if there is, produce it. And if you can find anywhere in the sacred history until the forming of the Catholic Church, I want you to produce it. There's no place now, and that's true. But now, wait a minute, you oneness. Just a second. Now, there's no place where if any man can show me one text of Scripture where that ceremony was used in the Bible, a Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you're obligated to come tell me where somebody was baptized like that. And some of them said, well, I'll take what Jesus said, not what Peter said. If they were contrary one to another, what are we going to do? If it all ain't God, what part of the Bible is right? Amen. It's all got to coincide and come together. Right. And only the revelation of God or our schools will ever teach it. Amen. It's a revelation Amen. that you must see. It. Then if them two men were contrary one to another, then what kind of a Bible are we reading? Amen. How do I know whether John 14 is right or not? How do I know whether uh, John 3 is right or not? How, how, how do I know? See? But the only way that I can have faith in God is to know that that Bible is right and believe it's right and stay right with it. Though I don't understand it, I move it anyhow. Amen. But when these contradictions comes up, then I go before God yeah. to find out. And the same angel that meets me in the meeting at the night is the same one who taught me. See? Now, see if this is how this is now. Now, Matthew 28, 19. Let's watch just a moment now. And now I'm going to take Acts 2, 38 right here. Where Peter said... Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and Matthew said, uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now listen. He said, baptize them not in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. He never said that. There's no name and name and name. He never said, baptize them in the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because it's not even sensible. He said, baptize them in the name, N-A-M-E, of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Is that right? Amen. Of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The conjunction, and, and, and. Not names. Not in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. Not in the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in the name, N-A-M-E, singular, of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, which one of them is the right name to baptize? It's one name. Which one is his father the right name or his son the right name or his Holy Ghost the right name? It's a name somewhere. Is that right? Well, now, I want to ask you something. Then. If the name, then if Jesus said, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy how many believe that Jesus said that? That's the Scriptures, Matthew 28, 19. In the name of the Father, Son. It's something that we know it to I call All right. Yeah. All right, just now, now, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, listen, brethren. There is no such a thing as name of the Father. Because Father is not a name. It's a title. Amen. Amen. There's no such a thing as the name of Son. Because Son is a title. There's no such a thing as name of Holy Ghost. That's what it is. I was saying that at a ministerial breakfast one morning, one woman, out of order, of course, anybody would disrupt anything like that. She said, wait just a minute, I beg your pardon, that Holy Ghost is a name. I said, that's what it is. I'm a human, but my name's not human. It is the Holy Ghost. That's not a name, that's what it is. It's a noun, of course, but it's not a, it's a, it's a, it's not a name. Now, if he said, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and neither Father, Son, or Holy Ghost is a name, then what is the name? We want to find out. Now, we can get it all in one place here if you just watch and serve a little time. Now, or conserve a little time, I meant to say. Now, notice. 
Matthew 28, 19. Now, I don't say that you, you might have done it, uh, some of you sisters or brothers. You might have picked up a book someday and looked at the back of it and said, John and Mary lived happy ever after. Well, who is John and Mary? What is, who is John and Mary that lived happy ever after? There's only one way you'll ever go know who John and Mary is, that if it's a puzzle to you, go back and read the book. Is that right? Amen. Go back to the first and read it through, and it tells you who John and Mary is. Well, if Jesus said, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and neither Father, Son, or Holy Ghost is a name, then if it's a puzzle, we better go back to the first of the book. Now let's turn back to the first chapter of Matthew, and we'll start there. It gives the genealogy until it comes down to the 18th verse. Now watch. Now watch just a minute. This is Father on my right side. This in the middle is Son. And this is the Holy Ghost. Now, this is the Father of Jesus Christ. Is that right? God is the Father of Jesus Christ. We all believe that? Amen. All right. Now, Matthew 1.18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before she, they came together, she was found with a child of the... I thought God was his father. <laughs> and she shall bring forth a son, they shall call his name Jesus. And her Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willingly to make her a public example, but minded to put her away privately on this wise, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. I thought God was his father. Now, has he got two fathers, brethren? He can't have. He was. He's a bastard child. And what kind of a religion have we got there? You've got to admit that God the Father and the Holy Ghost is the same self-spirit. Amen. Sure it is. Sure, it's the same self-spirit. Now, we got down to see that. And she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from his sin. This is all done that it might be fulfilled. I'm quoting Scripture. You ministers know it's a go. That it might be fulfilled, spoke a uh, prophet of the Lord, saying, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is by interpretation God with us. Is that right? Amen. Then what is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Certainly. That's the reason Peter is baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. But I don't care if you're baptized in the name of Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, and Morning Star. That's titles, too. If your heart is right towards God, he knows your heart. But now, now I express that. Now, now I said, now, Brother Sism said, now, of course, sure, that looked like one. So he was right in for that. Now I said, now, um, uh, here, I want to say something to you now. See? I said, now, I want to prove to you that these both men said the same thing. Now, Matthew said, in the name of the Father. Is that right? All right. And Peter said, in the name of the Lord. Matthew 28, 19 said, in the name of the Father. And Acts 2, 38 said, in the name of the Lord. David said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Who was it? Father and Lord is the same name. David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, set thou on my right hand. See? In the name of the Father, in the name of the Lord. And Matthew said, in the name of the Son, and Peter said, in the name of Jesus. Who is the Son? Jesus. In the name of the Holy Ghost was Matthew. And Peter said, in the name of Christ, the Logos. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Why, it's just as perfect as it can be. See, Brother Sism said to me, uh, Brother Sism, the oneness brother, he said, Brother Branham, that's right. But he said, that is this. I said, then this is that. <laughs> I said, if that's this, this is that. So what are you fussing about? And I said, let me recommend to you, brother. If I ever baptize a person, here's what I, I said. Now, here's Dr. Ness. Hey, somebody said a while ago, you brother, and she knew Dr. Ness. Well, I'll say here, uh, uh, Brother Hicks, here, he has a, I think you have a doctor degree, is that right? All right. Now, I said, if Dr. Ness sitting here, 
Now, I said, um, if I wanted, now, when I take a person to the water to baptize him, I recognize it just like he did. I said, that was titles that went to his name. Now, I said, now, the assembly brothers are using titles, and the oneness brother are using name. Now, I said, now, I'm going to prove to you you're both wrong and I'm right. You know how you have to, you have man under strain that way, you have to have a little sense of humor once in a while to kind of unwind them. So I said, I'm going to prove to you that you're both wrong and I'm right. I said, now what if I wanted to regard uh, Brother Ness? I'd say uh, our Brother Hicks here. See, I'd say uh, 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 Hicks. Now, would that sound nice? No. Well, what if I'd say, Doctor? Hey, Doc, what about it? Now, that sounds irreverent, doesn't it? When I said, that's where you assembly, see? When you assembly, brother, say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, you just say, in the name of the reverend doctor. And I said, then you won this, brother, when you baptize, you say, Jesus. They don't see you, they, Jesus only just use the name Jesus. They just many Jesuses, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, there's many, baptized in the name of Jesus, so I certainly don't go for that. There's no scripture. He gets the original see if it ain't Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Certainly. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's many Jesuses, Amen. certainly. And the Christ is the anointed. Now I said, now if I was going to say the same thing, Brother Nest, I'd say, would it sound right if he said, Hey, Nest? I said, that's what you want us to say it. <laughs> See? Wouldn't that be an irreverent disregard for that man who studied and he's got a doctor's degree? If he studied hard for that, he ought to be titled. And I said, then, if I said, Hey, Doc! I said, wouldn't that sound flat for a minister to address another one? Or I said, that's just the way that you do it on the side for the title. But I said, when I take a man to the water, I walk up there and ask him and talk and get his name and whoever he is and his faith. Then I pray and say, now, Father, as thou hast commissioned us to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. You, brother, know that's the original thing. Make disciples of all nations baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatever things that thou hast, all things that thou hast uh, uh, taught us. So then I said, upon your confession of faith, upon your confession of your sins and your faith in the Son of God, I baptize thee, my beloved brother, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I yeah. said, that's the way I baptize. I both recognize his titles, for he was both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the reason Jesus said that was, now, uh, look, if, if that isn't so, you've got a contradiction in your Scripture. That's right. You've got a contradiction. And what are you going to do when, what if this Buddhist brother would rise up and say that? What about this? What did they say when they told me over there when this Indian brother, John Morris Reed had, and said to him, said, what about Mark 16? He had a crawfish on him. You don't have to crawfish on nothing. Amen. That's God's Word. Yeah. Stay with it. Just pray. Get the revelation. It all runs the same. Amen. See, they're both saying the same. Now, not titles, not flat. I said, now, I recognize him. He was the Father, not another God. He was the Son, not another God, the same God. He, it's three offices, God in the fatherhood, dispensation, if you want to call it, of the fatherhood, sonship. It's the same God in us now. I'll be with you. Uh, I, the personal pronoun, I'll be with you. So, you see, it's three offices, not three gods. Now, brother, if the disciples never used it and on down, I ain't saying nothing against it. That's all right. I'll tell you, if a man come out here is baptized in the name of the rose of Sharon, Lily Valley, and Morning Star, and believe Jesus Christ is Savior, I'd say, God bless you, brother. Come on. Amen. Let's go. Amen. That's right. Because if your heart ain't right, you're not right anyhow. Amen. Exactly right. Amen. Your, your heart's got to be right. Amen. And I said, now look, now if I was going to greet Brother Nest here, I'd say the Reverend Dr. Nest. That's exactly. He is a minister. He ought to be regarded as a reverend. He has studied and much study. He has a doctor's degree, so he should be called doctor. That's his title. See? And his name is Nest, though. Now, I wouldn't say, hey, Nest. Hey, Doc. No, that wouldn't be right. I'd say, the Reverend Dr. Nest. See, that's what I'm calling. See what he is. Both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ. See? Now, I said, if I ever baptize one out in your all's churches, that's the way I'll baptize him. I said, would you receive him, Brother Nest? He said, certainly. He's been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I said, would you receive him, Brother Sism? He said, certainly. He's baptized in Jesus' name. 
<laughs> then what's the matter with you, brother? Why don't you accept that and break down these walls where these poor human beings are? The oneness wants to really, the, the congregations, they want to worship with the assemblies. The assemblies, congregation want to worship with the oneness. And brethren are that way. They are that way, but as long as the devil can make them fight. Now, you see what I mean, brother? I'm driving towards that one thing, Jesus Christ, and the uniting of the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what my purpose is. Now, I don't say nothing about, hey, you ain't baptized in Jesus' name, you're going to hell. Now, that's nonsense. Amen. I'll tell you what happened the other day. I was down in Texas for leaving, and uh, the brethren here are witnesses of this. The Oneness Church, 72 churches sponsored my meeting. <laughs> And I put Brother Petty, the Assembly of God brother, up on a platform that night. Now, you know that's true. He's a precious brother. Brother Petty, if any of you know him, in Beaumont, Texas. He's one of the finest men I ever met. His wife is a converted Catholic, a real sainted woman. He's a real man of God. Tell me who's a finer man than Roy Weed of the Assembly of God. Mention any of these men. Look at all these brothers I know around here. Brother uh, uh, from the... Philadelphia church here and the assemblies of God man and who's any finer people tell me where tell me who's a finer man than Jack Moore tell me that he's a what they call he belongs to them he's not a radical you find radical on both sides yes. and that's where the people point that's where the devil points yes. but they're all man of God God's given the Holy Ghost amen if it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd all be gone with yeah, our yeah, 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 yeah. It's exactly right. Yeah. But the grace of God binds us together. No wonder we can sing, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. That's what we need. Yeah. Man. And so, you know what? The general superintendent over the, the church called me up. He said, Did you know what you did last night? The second night there. I said, What? I said, We had a wonderful meeting. said, You had a man on your pulpit was a sinner. I said, I didn't know it. Where was said that Mr. Petty? Oh, I said, a sinner? What? I said, he's the assembly of God. Preacher, brother. He said, uh, yes, but he's still a sinner because he hasn't been baptized right. <laughs> and I said, brother, pray tell me why. I said, he's got the Holy Ghost. He said, brother Bram, what did Peter say? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. Therefore, your sins cannot be remitted until you're baptized in Jesus' name. I said, is that the farmer, my brother? He said, that's the farmer. I said, God upset his own apple cart then in Acts 10, 49. For while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell upon them which heard the word. <laughs> and they had never been baptized at all. Then God gave the Holy Ghost to people that wasn't even converted. <laughs> I said, where in the world are you standing now? He said, you know what we're going to do? said, we're drawing a little ring and drawing you right out of our circle. Then I said, I'm going to draw another and draw you right back in again. <laughs> I said, you can't draw me out because I love you. See, you just can't do it. I said, there's too many of your, your brethren out there that love me and believe in me. I said, you, uh, 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 they'll come anyhow. I said, they'll come and you can't draw me out. If you draw me out, I'll draw you back in. I said, when you make one circle, God, by his grace, let me draw another and pull you right back in. That's right. Draw them right back again. Brother, oh, in Christ's name, may I say this? Uh, I've got, I know I'm holding up time here. It's just about almost time for closing, I guess. But let me just say this, see. And I said to that man, I said, I would go with you as long as you would preach the scriptures and have love and believe that, that and preach and say you was baptizing people not in the name of Jesus, Jesus only. No, sir. I, I sure wouldn't go for that. Cause I'm acquainted with several Jesuses. I know them uh, in Africa and different places, people named Jesus. But if you will use the term of our Lord, Jesus Christ, I'll go with you on that. That's all right. I'll stick by you. I think you should put Father, Son, and Holy Ghost first to, to get it right. I said, I think you should. But he said, oh, no, no, that, that's back at Trinity. I said, it is not a Trinity. It's one God in three offices. Not a trinity of three gods. We don't have no three gods. Certainly not. There's no such a thing. One taught in the Bible. And there's only one God. Here you are, Israel. I'm the Lord your God. One God. First commandment. 
Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Certainly, he's one God, not three. That's a Catholic version of it. And it was lead off from the Catholic to the Lutheran and on down and so forth. And it's generally believed among people today that we have three gods. And that's where you'll never, this gospel will never go to the Jews, which I prophesied in the morning to a Jewish missionary there. You'll never take a Trinity God to Amen. a Jew. You will never do that, which he isn't. He's got better sense than that. Amen. See, he knows more about the Bible than that. But he's yes, never a triune God to a, to a Jew. If you let him know it's the same Jehovah, he'll receive it right now. Amen. Sure. Amen. That's Amen. it. See? And I believe all this that Joseph said, brethren, don't be angry with yourself. Because God has did this, you see, for, for a thing it's so that uh, it can wait till this time. That's all because our Gentile age is just about over. Now, I believe that with all of our hearts. Amen. So do you see, my brethren, I'm trying to drive at something. It's this group of people of man who has the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amy McPherson's group, what does she do? She's first the oneness, I believe, then come out and become a sinner, and then pulled out and organized herself different. You're not long ago. Put in a little group, a little thing. I was sitting in O.L. Jaggers' meeting. Now, we all know O.L. Jaggers. His, his father helped found the General Council of Assemblies of God. Now, O.L. is a great man. He's a great preacher. I told him not long ago, I said, Brother Jaggers, if I could preach like you did, I'd never even have a healing service. But he had got all that blood and wine and stuff when he first started over there. Excuse me if I'm hurting your feelings, brother, on that. I, I, that's all right. God can make blood come, wine come, or oil come, whatever he wants to. But that don't remit sins. No, oh, sir. No, sir. No, indeedy. The blood of Jesus Christ shall never lose its power. But all the rich in the church of God will be saved just then no more. I said, Brother Jaggers, I took him, I called him up, and I was with the Christian businessman. I said, I said, uh, Brother Oil, he said, where in the world are you at? I was a little cheap motel out there. And he said, you mean to tell me they put you out of your eyes? That's my desire. When I come to you, I said, what did you do? You put me on a Statler Hotel, and I had to stand in the corner. They set me down at the table and didn't know which knife to use or nothing else. And I did, went out through there without a coat on me. He wanted to run me out. And I said, I don't know how to handle myself. I said, I'll take you over there if they're too poor to do it. I said, no, sir. I said, what I want to do is have a steak with you if you'll pay for it. And he said, all right. <laughs> we went out to a place and we sat down and I said, Brother Jaggers, I certainly admire your, and he's a very dear friend of mine, a precious brother. And uh, I had his little pamphlet in here where he had that woman that just come over here from overseas that had that blood in her hands and name. So I had it in here. I just wanted to deny it once and then I had it right on his, on his paper. You know? I said, I have noticed where you're... Uh, uh, going right along, having going to have a big revival. Started up because a businessman had me over there. Of course, oh, look like people know if the Holy Spirit can reveal on the platform. Mm -hmm. Can He tell me what's going on in places, brother? Yeah. I can tell you word by word and prove it. But brother Carlson, this brother here, I said at the meeting yesterday and told these brethren what would be here this morning. Yes, sir. Right, exactly. Amen. See, because the Holy Spirit woke me up and said, "Stand by the window." I looked the window and He showed me just exactly this. And I said, "Now, brothers, that's, that's right." right. That's exactly right. Uh, see, why well, they all to know it. Here not long ago, a man got up here at the Chautauqua and said, uh, 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 Brother Branham is a prophet. I don't claim to be no prophet. See? But he said, Brother Branham is a prophet when he's under the spirit of discernment. But said, oh, his doctrine is poison. Be careful with it. I thought of an educated man would say a thing like that. What does a prophet mean? A divine interpreter of the word. Yes, sir. Amen. The word of the Lord came to the prophet. You see. But just uh, that, that's neither here nor say. But anyhow, Brother Jaggers and I said, um, he said, oh, I said, I've seen about that woman that uh, got that uh, blood in her hand. Oh, he said, Brother Bram, that's the most phenomenal you've ever seen. I said, Brother Jaggers, I love you. First, I want you to put my hand in yours. They say we're brothers. He said, sure. What's the matter? I said, you are one of the most powerful preachers that I know of. What a, what an instrument for God that you are. He said, thank you, Brother Renan. You're really humble. I said, I'm not saying that to be humble. I'm saying that because I believe it. You are God's servant. Mm -hmm. I said, Brother Jaggers, unless you, you're, you're running too much out, you haven't got a counterbalance for what you're talking about. You're basing, and here's what's the matter while you assemblies of God and other men, only healing services. I don't blame you. There's so much call, and Tommy here is a good brother, and we know how solid he's that. But there's so much in the land today under the name of divine healing, no wonder you don't want to sponsor a meeting in a city. Right, 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 they right, come right, and bleed right, the right, people right, and right. go out, and what have they got? Yeah, don't yeah, give the people a bit more than you do from the platform, from your own home. Right. And you're right, brother, and I'm telling you you're right. But it's just like I was reading the history of Martin Luther. It said it wasn't a mystery that Martin Luther could protest the Catholic Church and get by with it. You've read his history. 
But if Martin Luther could hold his head above all the fanaticism that followed his revival, there was the mystery. And when the phenomenon is done, the uncircumcised follows, just like it was in Egypt. And it always has caused trouble out in the land. We know that when we get out there, which is the raised up cord God had to destroy. But, brother, I don't blame you. Brother Jaggers sat there and tried to tell me that that was the Holy Ghost to do that. And said, and then I had in his own paper, I said, Brother Jaggers, now I said, I am a seventh grade pupil. And you are a doctor of divinity and studied to be an attorney. You was raised up in a clean, decent church, the Assemblies of God. Your father helped to found that faith. And you pulling away, that's up to you. But I said, that's up to any man who wants to do that. I don't draw any lines there. But when it comes to a place that an instrument like you could win thousands of souls to Christ, would build your ministry up on a sensation. I said, Brother Jaggers, you build a column like that, if you haven't got a counterbalance for that, it'll fall after that's a while. Right, that's right. And you've got to have Scripture for what you're talking about. He said, there is Scripture. I said, produce it. He said, well, Brother Branham, said, that's the Holy Ghost doing that. I said, show me the Scripture where it said the Holy Ghost ever made blood come out on somebody and so forth like that. This truth. Aura pour out of him. You said that aura was for divine healing. And you said that woman's blood would be the salvation of nations. I said, if that is so, then what happened to the blood of Jesus Christ? Amen. It takes away anything that's against it is anti. Amen. It's against it. I said, it becomes an anti-Christ doctrine. Oh, I said, Brother Branham, you'll learn someday. I said, I hope I never learn like that. Yes. Now, brother, I said, I love you, and you're my brother. And I said, Brother Jaggers, you're going to get on a limb after a while that you can't get back off of. Amen. Come Amen. back to your church and come back and stay with the gospel. And I said, don't build it up on sensations. I said, now he's, got, he's baptized in the eternal life. You know, every time you baptize, you go back to a young woman or man. Now, that's going to, the eagle never die. So that is, he's on the end of the limb right now. Amen. And that vitamin pills out of the dead sea. You see? But that's what it is, brother. You start all those little sensations, and you man here, it's got these churches. You let something like that come into the city, and, you know, the devil is shrewd. And he, he jumps in on those things like Amen. that. He fusses at it. And he, he gets people wound up, and he causes confusions in the church and things. But that isn't so. Now, here, no matter how much you are right, there's one thing that we fail and miss, my brother. I'm closing and saying this. No matter how right I am and how scriptural I am and how much I know about God's Bible, if I haven't got the Spirit of God of love in my heart for the whole human race Amen. and all, then I'm wrong to begin with. Amen. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, though I have knowledge, see, and understand all the mysteries of God, see, under understand, and have not charity, I'm nothing. Amen. Amen. And though I speak with tongue of man yeah. and of angels, that's those who you speak to God and always the ones can be interpreted. Though I speak with tongues, genuine tongues, of man and angels and have not love. charity, love, it profits me nothing. So if I know all the mysteries of God and can unroll them and, and make them all hit together and I don't have love, what good does it do? And when I, Jesus said, this will all men know that you are my disciples, when you have, when the assemblies has love for the oneness, and the oneness has love for the same. When you have love, one person will be right or wrong, and as long as the objective is wrong, the motive is wrong, brother, then you're wrong to begin with. Isn't that right? Say, though I speak with tongue of men and angels, and have not charity, I'm not nothing yet. Because God is love. We know that. And I believe in speaking in tongues. Now, somebody said, Brother Bram, don't believe in the initial evidence. I'd like to clear that up with you now. See? I'd like to tell you, I believe that when a man receives Christ, he receives a portion of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said in Matthew, the, uh, the 12th chapter, uh, the 5th chapter and the 20, uh, 24th verse, he said, uh, no, I believe St. John 5, 24, he said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life. Now, there's only one form of eternal life and not come into the condemnation, but pass from death to life. Now, I believe that no man can call himself. God has to call him. And if God really called him, now, there's a lot of people we know, brethren, it's worked up and thinks that God's called him, but their life soon finds it, you find it out. But if God calls you, why, you're, you'll be there and you'll stay there. See, you know? And then, um, if, uh, 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 that's not Baptist doctrine, you know, that, see, but I don't believe in shaking hands and having eternal security and all that stuff. I, 
I don't believe in that, not at all. If they want to believe that, well, that's all right. I still say they're my brothers. This morning, if I was going to ask for a piece of pie, which is almost dinner time, I may make cherry and you might take an apple, but we're both eating pie, see? So it doesn't make any longer we're eating pie. That's the way we believe. If you want to be a oneness, be a oneness. If you want to be assembly of God, be assembly of God. If you want to be whatever you are, Baptist, Presbyterian, be a Christian in it, see? Amen. And, and search it out by yourself. But don't fuss with one another because these little things, they all dovetail together. <coughs> That's right. They all dovetail together and come to that one place. And, and no matter what we do, how many miracles we can perform, how many mountains we can move or whatever it is until we come to a place that we love. Amen. Amen. Not make believe. But we love one another. When we love every brother, no matter what church he belongs to, we love him, not just pretend we do because we know it's a religious idea. It's we're supposed to do it, but because we do it. We love one another. And long-suffering, bearing with one another. I believe in Colossians 3, about 9, somewhere along in there. I might, I, I don't, I might be wrong on the scripture, but it said this. After we become a Christian, we should not envy. See? We can't have faith when we're trying to pay respects and honor to one another. See, we can't do that. We can't have faith. We've got to honor God. See, honor Him. Believe in my brother, sure, is love. But the respects and dignity goes to God. It's but have a faith and confidence in one another. And don't lie to one another. See, don't lie to one another. If I tell you this morning I love you, I must mean that. If it doesn't, I'm a hypocrite. That's exactly now, brethren, along this line, now, Brother Tommy, I hope I haven't held uh, too much here. I, uh, Brother Tommy's got something to say just in a second. But I might say this. When I come into the midst of you, I believe this. I believe that God our Father overshadowed a virgin called Mary and created in her a blood cell which brought forth Jesus Christ which was the Son of God, the tabernacle in which God unveiled himself in flesh, manifested himself among us. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. I believe that that blood cell was broken at Calvary for the remission of our sins, and the Spirit went out of him and came back upon the church because the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Christ, the Logos, was in us now, the Holy Spirit, by baptism, making us... Christ separated himself, giving his life to each one of us, that we as a group of people might be the church of God. And not long ago, I used to ride, you know that. My father was a rider, great shot. I used to ride. We heard the, the, in the Repitol Valley, uh, I mean the Troublesome River over the Repitol Range. The Hereford Association grazes that valley. And up on that valley, the ranchers, they, they have so much uh, grass that they can raise. And when a ranch will produce as much as a ton of hay, you can run a cow on the, on the pasture up below Estrus Park. There. And you can run a cow in those part of my great hunting grounds up in there. And I've ranched in there for a year. I go yet in spring and fall when I'm off the can and, and ride the roundup just to be up there. Because I love to ride. And all up and down the ran- that valley is a, gr- a bunch of ranchers that has the right into here. And uh, it's a grazer cattle. And in the springtime, many times, I helped them get the cattle together and run them up there. And there's a drift fence where they can't drift back on private property coming down through the range. So, and the ranger stands there and counts those cattle when he goes in, when they go in. And I've said them many a day, hour after hour, watch Mr. Grimes' bunch go through. He had the diamond bar. Ours is a turkey track. And they had the, the tripod just below us and uh, Jeffries and so forth. Then when I'd put my leg, as many of you know, across the horn of the saddle and sit there and watch that ranger as he stood there, counting these cattle, I noticed one thing. He didn't pay much attention to the brand that was on it. But there's one thing he really looked for. That was a blood tag. It had to be a thoroughbred Hereford or it couldn't go behind that fence. But the brand didn't make much difference. And I think that's where it'll be at the judgment. Yeah. He's not going to look at our brand, but he'll look for the blood tag. Yeah. I have made my mistakes, brethren, and I've done so many things that's wrong. And if any time along the road I've brought or you have heard something that I might have remarked or said that given offense or some kind, 
Or if I said something this morning, they'd give an offense. I ask you as a Christian brother or sister, forgive me. I don't mean to do it. I've only spelled you my heart so that we would know. If there's any baptizing to be done, you brother, do it yourself. See? That's, uh, I don't do it. If I have, that's the way I'll baptize one like that. Neither one of you can take it. See? So you can take the person there, baptize the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and they're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, too. So uh, if I ever baptize one, but I haven't done it yet, I only baptize in my own church. And that's just the people there. And that's the way people at my church are baptized. And if you look back, that's the old missionary ritual, the old missionary Baptist ritual. And now, <clears throat> if uh, that's uh, that, I believe in divine healing. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the, in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I believe in every gift that God gave to his church. Amen. I'm for them 100%. But I believe I'm not in for a lot of this year's super-duper healing that we have around today. I would just like to make a remark here. Some time ago, there was a brother, and it isn't my precious brother Tommy Hicks, which I regard as a true servant of Christ. There was another man in another country, and in this country, there was uh, just all the time God super duper healer, super duper healer, you know, like that. And I got a letter after the man had uh, from the Lutheran Church. And my secretary here knows we have it on file. I wouldn't call the man's name because it's not Christian. Like, although I disagree with the man's ideas, but that's perfectly all right. I love him. He's my brother. But it just got to a place to where you just got to have some kind of a sensation or whip it up or something other like that. See? And that, that's no good. See? Brother, bodily exercise does very little. And so this Lutheran minister wrote this minister back uh, uh, a letter. And he said, you American evangelists who come here, so with all your super-duper healing to everybody, and now this sounds like a little bouquet to myself, but God knows I don't mean it in that way. But he said, when when little Deborah Statscliffe died, that baby, and that mother had stood there that day in India in California where that baby had died and was cold and seen lay that baby over in Brother Branham's arms. And him stand there and pray for it. The baby starts screaming and kicking and hand it back to him. He also knew of the Mexican case, which we can base this full gospel businessman, a statement you have to have something stated from a doctor. When that little Mexican baby had died that morning at 9 o'clock, and this was 11 o'clock that night, doctor wrote his statement out. Uh, Brother Espinosa, which many of you assembly of God, brother, know, he was the one who got the uh, statement from the doctor that he died. And I saw a vision out over the crowd when 20,000 Catholic people come to Christ in Mexico City. I said, don't you just take that. I don't know that baby. I just saw a vision out here. And Billy, uh, trying to, with 30 or 40 ushers, couldn't keep that little woman out of the prayer line with that baby. She'd run between her legs and everything. So finally, I sent Jack Moore down. I said, go pray for it. I looked out here, and I see a little Mexican baby smiling. I said, wait a minute. Bring it here. And when I put my hands on that blanket, it poured down rain all day and had been standing there since early that morning. This is about 11 o'clock at night. And put my hands over on the little baby and begin kicking and squealing. And they begin screaming. So then they take it down and got the statement, went to the doctor. And the doctor said, I pronounced the baby dead this morning at 9 o'clock at die with pneumonia. And so then those things are, are, are true. They are statements. It has to be. We should always be honest and truthful about anything. Don't make it any, just let it be what it is. Let it, God don't need any help on anything. You see, he, he's God. So this, he said, now, but when this mother called up Brother Branham in America, crying to him over the phone, come over and raise up my little baby. And the United States government, her husband is a chaplain in the army. And you all know Julius, many of you. Wrote my book, Prophet Visits Africa. And that poor little Norwegian mother, screaming top of her voice, said, Brother Bram, I'll stand there when that baby come to life. Said, we believe you to be a servant of, the, of Christ. Said, come lay your hands upon my baby. And it'll live. Just died just in a moment or two with pneumonia. That's sick about four hours, five. And these men have been around there hollering, screaming, and jumping up and down, saying, God go raise up, God go raise up. And said, by that, the American, Air, not the American Airlines, the United States Army was going to fly me over in a jet and back in the day. <laughs> See? And I said, before I come, let me find the will of the Lord. So I prayed two days, and that doctor so nice left the baby lay there. Then one morning I got up and started walking out into the kitchen. I looked standing there over just the light, about the size of that light there, circling around. Said, "Don't touch that. Don't rebuke that. That's the hand of the Lord." 
I run right back and called the nation and called and said, I, I cannot come. And this Lutheran minister said, why don't you wait till you get a clear-cut decision from God, like Brother Branham did, and then you know what you're talking about. Now, that is it, brother. If we'll just not jump at conclusions and wait and get a clean, clear-cut decision from God. Amen. And all this here healing sinners that don't know nothing about God, I believe that divine healing is based upon a principle Amen. that you ought to come to God first and give your heart to Him and wash up your lives in the blood of Jesus Christ, and then God will go to work with you and heal you. Just like uh, this brother said about the little woman he had prayed for down there, a saint of God, you see. In my life, I've made many mistakes. I've done lots of things that's wrong. Now, probably if I live much longer, I'll do many more. Perhaps some of them will be stumbling blocks in your way. I hope that you forgive me. I was reading of Abraham. How that the frustrations that he had, how that he admired things that he did, he doubted God and he lied about his wife and everything. But when his divine commentary was written in Romans 4, it never mentioned his mistakes, but it said Abraham <laughs> never staggered at the unbelief through God, but was strong. All of his mistakes was all forgotten about when the divine commentary of his life was written. His frustrations wasn't even mentioned. His mistakes wasn't mentioned. Brother, I hope that when my commentary is read that day that he'll rub mine out too and won't we'll think about it. I hope you do too. God bless you. I think that we can say this morning, sum up everything that's been said with these words. Christ in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. There's been some out and over from the life of every man. I'm not going to speak. I have a message. I believe that everything has been said in truth and what happened. My heart is cursed this morning. I believe that for many of us, the things have been stirred up. Make us better men and women of God. They do put no as the home run team. But did you know that they do from also the strikeout team? He struck out more times than he ever made home runs. He struck out 1,307 times. He only made 860 home runs. But every time they do struck out, Went back to the dugout and the old one car hollered, You're out. Went back to the dugout and the old one car hollered, You're out. 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 Say it again, please. Right in me, the hope of the Lord. It's everything. Yes. It's everything. That's right. It's everything. Everything. Hallelujah. Amen. We reach the point. vision and our sights be raised high, high, higher, higher, 
than the things of this world. Yes. That we may see Christ and others may see Christ in us. Lay your hand upon each one of these of thy servants. Grant it, Lord. And may as we go out of this place this morning, that we will determine to see nothing save Christ only. Amen. That I have nothing within each other. That we know the job is there's such a big job to be done, Jesus. There's such a great harvest to be reaped. Yes, oh, Lord. help us, Lord. Yes. That we'll join hands together and sweep across the Yes, Lord. When the lost and dying see before Yes, Lord. I want you to lift your hand and just praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and praise and praise and praise and thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus Lord. We love you. Yes, hallelujah. We praise yes. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's not thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we stand? I want you to lift your hands and sing with me, I love you. Do you love him? Amen. Amen. Do you love him with all your heart? Raise your hands and sing it all together, I love you. Oh.